to start in child's pose so you can either have your legs together or a little gap nice stretch under the armpit and then cat stretch out into a half plank and then cat stretch back into child's pose curving at the spine again and do what feels good today loosen off this back mobilize and get a nice stretch tuning into that stress response trying to relax it before bed exhale into child's pose inhale out we're feeling the stretch in the back lean into that stretch take your time one more into cat cow happen if I started early people would come in <laughs> <laughs> never happened you've not missed much just a bit of cat cow just taking your time until you mobilize Thread the needle, so bring that arm through, starting off small range of movement, following your gaze with your hand as far around as you can. Notice where this pulls or you feel the stretch. These are your tight areas that we're working through. Palms should be directly under your shoulder. This is a shoulder strengthening, stabilizing exercise as well. Looking for 10. And then as you begin to mobilise and get used to this plane of movement, try and push through both sides a little bit further. Deep breath, exhale as you thread that needle. One more and we're going to hold that position. Extend the stabilising arm over your head. And just try and sink into the mat, feel that stretch in your lower back. Deep breath and every exhale, just will try and release more tension in your lower back and sink in. Relax the shoulders. If that feels okay, you can either stay here or you can tuck the top arm behind your back, like so. Opens up the chest, make sure your chest isn't folding down into the mat, you're keeping it nice and high. Exhale. working on releasing that tension. Keep a lot of stress in our backs and our pelvis. We're just trying to relax. Untucking that arm if you've got it tucked. I'm gonna do the other side now. So start off again, small ranges of movement until you mobilize and get used to it. 10 to 12 and then we'll stop and hold that position in the last one. As you begin to mobilise and get used to it, try and push round both sides. You're not rushing through it. You're controlling the movement. Another five. Make sure your palm's directly under your shoulder. Good. Last one and then hold. Extend the arm. 
hold for a few seconds just enjoy that stretch if you feel it and it's nicer in this position just stay like this or if you feel free to tuck that top arm around the back and you can push down on the on the arm that's tucked in thread the needle for a deeper stretch exhale Trying to sink deeper with every exhale, pushing out in the inhale with your belly and chest. Good, untucking that arm. I'm going to come into the prone position. So to get a deep stretch in the spine around the back, muscles, we need them nice and warm so it's safe to do so. So shoulders next, hands next to our ears gonna push our bellies off so you can keep your feet on the floor um, but to make it harder if you want to um, load the lower back more bring your feet off as well looking for high reps 15 to 20 really push your elbows behind you in your work on or not all just opening the chest but also strengthening the upper back exhale coming down And again, notice where you're feeling any sensations of burning in the back, because these are your weaknesses. So if you need to split it up, pause for a few seconds, wait for that burning to subside, and then we're going again. Pause at the top for a squeeze. So for this one, you're trying to, over time, get more of a range of movement. About one second up and roughly two seconds down. Another five. Three. Two. Just carefully coming up, knees together, child's pause. Stretch it out. You feel a little burn and then it just goes away. Inhale, exhale. You've got tension in your shoulders as you're extending your arms in front of you. I'm gonna do that again, back into the prone position. for this, uh, roughly the same amount of reps as you got last time. Six, excellent. Pushing them short, them elbows behind you. So strengthening the back of the neck as well. One more. Good, then take your time coming up into child's pose. Let your back sink into the mat. Forward to the mat if you can. Length, feeling the length in your spine, separating each vertebrae. Go a little bit wider with the knees, leaving a gap with the feet at the moment because we're going to go into a frog stretch in a minute. Feeling the inner stretch in the groin as well as the back. And you can do wrist circles if you want to mobilize the wrists.
I'm going to point our toes out either side for a frog stretch and then try and sink into it. So if you feel this too much in your knee and it's sore, just come out of it back into child's pose. Otherwise, try and you feel like really deep in the pelvis, like in the hip area, in the joint. So deep breaths will help you relax into that. Really good for any tight pelvic muscles like the piriformis and your hip flexors. Takes a few seconds, but make sure you breathe in and it's telling your body to relax and it's not under threat. A couple of more breaths. Good. On our backs next, feel free to grab a drink. The glutes, the bum cheeks next. So we fire up them, really important for pelvic strength, stability and lower back. Gets a lot of blood flow to those areas. So we're going to start with glute bridges, looking for 20. So just coming up as high as you can as what feels comfortable. Try not to overextend so your hips aren't going past your knees or anything like that. Shoulder width apart stance, weight should be in your heels, so you should be able to lift your toes. So we're looking for 20, or as many as you can, with that burn, that um, it's also a bit of a cramping in your lower glute. Another nine. Pausing at the top for a bum squeeze. The harder you tense and squeeze, the more toning and strength is built. If you get your protein, of course. Four. All the way up, all the way down to get the full range of movement. Okay, bring it in for a hug and roll. Side to side. Your shoulder blades are doing the movement. Back into the bridge position, we're just going to hold it. Again, check your weights in your heels. I'm going to extend the arms, shoulder height, and we're going to do um, an, a shoulder extension. So pushing up to the ceiling and then depressing the shoulders so they're touching the mat, and then they're off the mat, then they're on the mat, off. Rib cage in, belly button into spine, make sure you can connect to the core. Keeping them bum cheeks squeezed. Looking for another five, four, three, two. One more. Good, and release. Well done. Bring it in for a hug and roll. I'm going to do single leg glute bridges, so feel free to do the double again, up and down. Or you can extend one leg, have the other bent, up and down. Or if that's too difficult, bend at the leg, up and down. So we want you to get your hip, make sure the level as well. You're coming up as high as you can, and the stabilizing leg has all the tension in that glute. So it's burning. So six is a good amount, but as many as you can, I'm going for 12. It's just completely up to you. Don't feel pressurized or anything. Everyone's got to start from somewhere. Exhale, coming down. Another five if you can. Four, three, two. One more. Good, coming down. Legs rise, I'm gonna hold that glute bridge. So one bum cheek is going to be burning more than the other because it's already fatigued. That's fine. That's good. That's what we want. Hold, hold, hold. Another 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one, and release. You can really feel that in the other bum, <laughs> in the bum cheek. Let's extend the opposite leg now. If we want to match the same reps, one. Again, make sure your hips are coming up and down and they're level with the other hip. Really squeeze that stabilizing leg bum cheek on the rise. Go another two. Let it burn. Release. When you're ready, another 10 second hold. Squeezing the glutes. Nine. Eight. Five. Three. Two. One and release. Bring it in for a hug and roll. Good. The piriformis that's responsible for lower back pain and deep glute pain in the bum cheek. We're going to stretch that and off next. Now it's nice and warm. So one of your legs, you're just going to cross it over a bent knee, like so, and then you want to push down on that knee. And try and relax and sink into it, it's a skill. Just trying to let go of any tension. You're going to feel this in the sides of your hips and your glute. Just going to hold that. It's a small stretch. I want to swap over to the other side. Good, and semi, semi supine. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale for four, out the mouth. Good, again, inhale. Filling the lungs, using the chest to rise, creating space between each rib. And exhale. Bring in the pelvic floor, relax. Inhale, like you're on the toilet with it. Pass in, pause, and exhale, holding in the pelvic floor. You don't want to pass any window you're in. Becomes an abdominal exercise. One more, inhale, relax. Exhale, hold in. Good. Next, our legs come up into tabletop. Ribcage tucked in, belly button into spine. I'm going to bring in a little pulse. So I want your back completely against the mat. Watch for any hip clicks, because this can mean a breakdown in the core. So if you're not sure if you're engaging your lower core enough, try lifting your hips up off the floor, because you can't do that without doing that. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bring it back down. Inhale, arms rise. Next, back up in tabletop. We're just going to reach, try and reach our toes all the way up, all the way down. Even if you can just get to your shin. Looking for 12. Or as many as you can with that burn. Trying to keep the legs as straight as you can, but if you can put a bend in them and that's easier, that's absolutely fine. Five left, let it burn. Oh, four, three, two more. One more. The slower you do it, the harder it is. One more. Ugh. Well done. Inhale, arms rise. Creating space between each rib as you do. Exhale. Feeling your belly deflate. One 
Omoa. Pelvic clocks next, uh, sorry, pelvic tilts next. So your back's flat in neutral against the mat. So it should have a small curve in the spine right now. Let's flatten that curve by moving the pelvis back. So rib cage in, belly button spine, you've got tension. For a pelvic tilt, you're gonna make sure that that curve in your back is exaggerated by bringing your pelvis forward but you're keeping the tension in your abs as you do so. So it's a small, subtle movement, they are the best. Forwards and backwards with the pelvis only, your knees or anything else aren't moving, but you're keeping the tension, have a poke around, make sure. This is really good for rehab and building that core connection. Have a poke around, make sure you've got tension in the part underneath the belly button as you're rocking forwards and backwards. And eventually, this works well with high reps, 20 to 30. You'll get a deep ache in the core. That's what we're looking for. So you're teaching your pelvis as it's moving everyday life, forwards and backwards, picking things up, up and down stairs to look after your back because it's pushing against your spine right now. So through both planes of movement, make sure you've got that tension. It might be a lot, it might not be much at all but be aware of it. Poking about uh, can build my muscle connection, okay? And get used to how it should feel. Another 10. Six. Five, let it burn. on and release relax good inhale arms rise just let us know after class if you struggled with that one because it's a common one because it's so subtle and sometimes part of that movement you might have been able to feel the core connection and other times you might have switched off again it's all part of the process it's a skill one more Good. Legs up into tabletop. Actually, one's going to bend. Rib cage in, belly button into spine. Back flat against the mat by pushing your hips up off the floor a little bit. One leg's going to come down and up. Down and up. Good. Inhale and exhale as the foot falls. Good. Looking for 10 to 12, another three, two. Oh, you're really loading the lower core here. Good, replace that leg with the straight leg. Another 10 to 12, and then we'll rest. If you need to rest before that, that's absolutely fine. Another three, two, <laughs> burn, 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 one more. Oh, well done. Semi supine, inhale, arms rise. One more. Let's wake up the obliques and isolate them a little bit more, the sides of the stomach. Start in position. So this is a nice stretch on the lower back as well. So you're in your knees, arms out to the sides, so make sure you've got space. Coming down with control like a window wiper. So coming down a little bit and straightening the legs. Coming into a crunch with the knees and down on the other side. Looking for 10, but enjoy the stretch as well. Just take your time. Really feel the sides of your stomach engage because you can't do this without it. Four. Five. Don't forget to straighten the legs a little bit. 
as you're touching the other side of the floor if you can you're just loading that sides of the stomach more another two good when you finish your reps rest and inhale arms rise Good. Carefully coming up into the seated position. I'm going to have a drink if you need to. I'm going to start isolating the obliques a little bit next. I think you know what's coming. Well, side plank dips, so make sure your elbow is directly under your shoulder. If it's too far forward or too far back, it's going to hurt. Uh, you are strengthening the shoulder girdle anyway, <coughs> so it will burn a little bit. Pushing the hips out so you feel a stretch in the hip flexors. Coming all the way up and all the way down. Curving in the sides of the stomach and down. Two, good. Three, pause at the top. Four. Looking for about ten. Five. Because then we're going to hold for ten. Six. Another three. Put in the weight of your body in the sides of the stomach. Last one. And hold. Rib cage in, belly button into spine. Deep breaths. Seven, six. Four, three, two, one. And release. Let's get a stretch. So bottom leg comes forward. Other back for mermaid stretch. Pushing over. Exhale. Shoulders down away from ears. Leaning over to that side. Keeping your sit bones on the mat. Let's go again, last time on this side. Looking for another 10 or as many as you can. Even six is hard, so. Make every rep count. Three. One more and hold. Whew, deep breaths. Last time this side, let it burn. Four, two, and release. Good. Sit down. Last time. Let's come a little bit further far over if you can. Good, let's hop over to the other side. So I need to match them reps now. I think this is my weaker side. So just be patient with the weaker side, it's absolutely fine. Whenever you're ready. Pull more, more, and hold. Deep breaths, rib cage in, belly button to spine. Seven, six, three, two, one, and release. Stretch it off. Ah. Oh, God. Shoulders down. Last time when you're ready. Let's go. Two, three, seven, 
Um, two more. And hold. Deep breaths, get the oxygen into them working muscles. Three, two, one, and release. Well done. Oh, see if we can get further over in the stretch now. to grab a drink. I'm going to stretch off the piriformis and the glute next. So we're going to be in the same position in the mermaid. Personally I find this a nicer one than the pigeon pose. Found it this week. So if you can sit bones down on the mat, knees roughly touching the floor. I'm just going to come forward as far forward as you can and you'll feel the stretch on the front glute. If you can put your elbows on the floor, great. If not, just stay here. As long as you feel the stretch in that glute. If you wanna go into pigeon pose and that's comfortable for you, that's absolutely fine. I just want you to feel a stretch in your glute. Inhaling, pause, and then slowly exhaling feeling the rise and fall of your stomach, incorporating your chest. So when we get stressed, we, we tend to belly breathe, so make sure that you're using your chest, creating space between each rib cage. And if you feel you can move into the stretch a little bit more, feel free to come further down Breathe. The body really tenses up during everyday life with especially the muscle groups, so we're trying to release tension here through breath work and just sitting and allowing ourselves to sink in. Carefully coming up, if you've got a seated job, um, to be honest, most people have got tight hip flexors come round to the back and you'll feel it in the back leg. Just gonna come round as far round as you can, shoulders down away from ears. If you can come onto your elbows, even better, you feel a really big stretch. Don't worry about it if you can't get this low and if you can bring your, if you can come all the way down. It's totally up to you. This is, this isn't easy by the way, like I feel a lot of, uh, well, deep breaths will help your body relax and release the tension. It's future Leanne's problem and how I'm going to get out of this though, so that's just that'd be me. Try and breathe into it, it'll help. Breath is so powerful. Carefully coming out of that position, go onto your elbows and let's swap over and see how we get on with the other side. So you might feel like this side's more flexible or more stiff. Treat every side differently. When you're ready, it's going to come forward. Let's get your body used to that. You might feel this stretch in your hips as well. <sighs> Breathe it out. And if you feel you can, bring your head to the floor. Again, switch off those muscles that have tensed up. Takes a few seconds. You've actively got to switch them off and sink in. Feel the stretch in the glute.
Okay, taking your time, I'm gonna do the counter stretch next. So I'm gonna hold this position or you can come down to your elbows or down onto the floor. Let's try and breathe and sink. Two more breaths. Good. Coming back up into the seated position. I'm gonna do book openings next. Nice stretch for the lower back. So back into semi-supine when you're ready. Well, actually, first we'll use the groin. So knees, feet together, and just allowing the legs to fall next to you. And be aware of the tension. Compare each side of the groin. Are you feeling it more in one side than the other? Again, it's another deep stretch. It's good. And the hip flexors. Bring your both knees up, over to one side. So if you've got a block, you can place it on that side if it's too deep of a stretch. And look in the opposite side. Feeling that lower back stretch. Ideally, hips should be stacked on top of each other and so should um, knees. I think I've got one leg longer than the other. Every exhale, allowing yourself to feel that stretch in your lower back. Sink, sink, sink. You're not forcing anything, you're just becoming a dead weight. If that feels good, go ahead and grab that top leg with your arm and just relax again. So just increase that stretch a little bit. You can straighten that leg as well if that feels good. If it's too much and it's starting to spasm or anything, just dial it right back and do the first position. Again, every exhale, sinking further into the mat. Feeling the pull. Again, it's not painful. You shouldn't be getting pins and needles or cramping or anything like that means you've gone too far too soon you might be feeling it in your glute as well it's a good stretch for that just being present with your body right now carefully coming out of that pause going into the other side might be a bit stiff so just take your time starting with the first dialed back version Looking the opposite way. So because, because we're concentrating on how it feels in our body and the breath work, we're not thinking, hopefully, of our to-do list. We're, like, we're keeping present and putting a pause on everything because it's our time with our body. Getting used to how that feels in that stretched position and keep sinking in. That feels all right on this side. Let's try a deeper stretch by straightening that top leg and grabbing hold of the back of our thigh. You might feel in your rib cage as well. It's a nice stretch after the hip dips we were doing. Carefully turning over onto the front, and the second to last stretch. Okay, so we're going to go for a deep, deep 
lower back stretch but this is a first position so let's get used to how this should feel so you, your head's just on top of your hands and allow your belly and hips and pelvis to sink into the mat and if that feels okay go ahead and go into sphinx deep breaths and allow the tension to be released from the lower back so this is quite a different stretch it can be quite comfortable used to do, we've done a lot of um, cobra and I feel like that's quite harsh on the lower back before we should become really good at doing this sphinx first so I want you to just every inhale allow your belly to rise and push off the floor slightly and every exhale allow your belly to fall and bring you closer to the mat and you'll feel a really deep stretch in your lower back just be aware of it it's not the most comfortable of stretches we don't do much bending this way every exhale sinking further in thank you elbows directly under your shoulders shoulders down away from ears coming back down forehead to hands just relax there a little bit and then we're going to come into child's pose because we've gone one way we want to stretch back the other way so you might feel a bit stiff until you sink into the child's pose knees together it's all part of keeping mobile and using the spine in all these different directions that it can, it should be capable of doing. But it won't feel very comfortable at first. Good. Last stretch before breath work to help us sleep at night. Uh, is the hamstring stretch so if you've got a block you can place it underneath your bum cheeks to keep your pelvis from tucking under so you want to keep proud chest forward you're just going to come as close to the feet as you can i'll show you from the side so we'll, a lot of us tuck our pelvis in and then stretch putting a curve in your lower back you want to come down with your pelvis untucked so chest proud coming down so your belly should go onto your thighs first before your chest so a lot, a lot of instructors, including myself, was doing it wrong. Um, it's quite common. <sighs> Exhale. So it's keeping that chest proud, feeling the stretch in the hamstrings. <sighs> Hold. Good. Okay, feel free to get into any seated position that you find comfortable. If it's the lotus, maybe this one, totally up to you. If you bring a block, you can sit on a block or a rolled up blanket. I'm just going to begin the relaxation. So you can do the Pilates if you don't want to do the Pranayama breath work because it can make you feel emotional and release trauma that's built up and stress. So if you want to do the Pilates, in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Um, if you want to do the pranayama with me, I'm going to do alternate nostril breathing. So with your right hand, you're going to close and open with these two fingers um, so we can stay present and we're thinking about nothing else apart from the breath, okay? So we're going to completely, so if you want, you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. It's totally up to you. You're the boss. But exhale completely out of the left nostril, closing the right over. Then inhale fully with the lungs in the left. Once you have, close it over. Then exhale through the right nostril completely. Inhale through the right nose. Close it over. Exhale through the left. 
Inhale through the left. Close it over. Now in your own time. If you can exhale through the nostril for a count of four, pause for two and inhale for four. It should bring relaxation. I want you to use your chest and your belly to bring this oxygen in. Full breaths. Notice how it feels in your nostrils, in your chest, the breath. If the four seconds feels all right, try and do six seconds. Thank you for coming tonight, everyone. Hope you sleep well. If you've got any feedbacks about the class, please see me.